All right, join us now to talk more about the new inflation data as well as legislation that he just introduced that would block the U.S. from selling oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to countries like China, Russia, Iran, uh, North Korea. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas joins us. Uh, Senator, it's good to have you on. The, all I can say is that it wasn't the high watermark for PPI. Um, it was still double digits, still uh, a concerning number, uh, Senator, but we have seen some rollover in commodities and, and even in oil, which is at, at 92 today. So maybe I'm just looking for some light at the end of uh, the tunnel. Hopefully it's not the train uh, coming at us, but uh, uh, maybe we've seen the worst in terms of commodity inflation. I'm just trying to figure out what we do with the labor uh, issue. Well, I'll tell you, Joe, the only light at the end of the tunnel I see is that we've got an election coming in November. And I think the November election is going to be a big, big election changing the path we're on. I, I have to say, I'm here in Washington, D.C. today, and, and this place is surreal. The Democratic White House, the Democratic majorities we have right now, they see these inflation numbers, the highest number since 1981, and their answer is to pour more gasoline on the fire. They're debating right now, their idea is spend trillions more money and raise taxes even more. And, and, and this is exactly backwards what you would want to do if you actually wanted to stop inflation to bring it under control we've got right now the highest inflation rate since 1981 1981 was after four years of jimmy carter and it really is striking that biden has been able to produce in a year and a half what it took jimmy carter four years to produce and and the democrats don't seem to have learned any lesson other than doing more of the same that got us in this mess to begin with Right. There's a lot of negative externalities that, that, that obviously we're dealing with in terms of reopening. That's that's one uh, in, in terms of supply chain lingering issues there. Uh, Senator um, Joe Biden didn't appoint Jay Powell. <laughs> His predecessor did. Uh, and obviously a, there, there's a lot of pointing at, at, uh, at the, the number of dollars that uh, that were printed, which are now uh, chasing, uh, you know, too few goods. And, and I know, you know, you probably have never uttered the words Putin price hike, but that has rippled. The invasion of Ukraine has rippled through uh, all different sectors. Yeah, but of, but of let's the, let's take each the, of those. Let's take each each of those one at a time. Which uh -huh. is number one. Yes, the economy reopened, which was great for the economy, and it had been Democratic politicians who had largely shut down the economy for far too long. That was a good thing for the economy, getting people back to work. That didn't drive inflation. What drove inflation is the Democrats got in power and they said as their priority spending trillions of dollars. And they could have decided to work in a bipartisan manner, but they didn't want to do that. They wanted to just go on a spending binge. They had power and, they, and a lot of us, myself included, were saying if you spend these trillions of dollars, if you print money that we don't have, the result is going to be inflation. And Joe Biden, the White House, they laughed at it. They said there is no inflation. No real economist says there's inflation. They said it's transitory. Everything they said was was malarkey. And and then the Putin pi uh, price hike, as, as you pointed out, that's the White House's latest talking point on inflation. Let's be clear. Gasoline prices had risen 48 percent before Putin invaded Ukraine. The reason Putin invaded Ukraine is because Joe Biden made the indefensible decision to waive sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Sanctions that I had authored, sanctions that had stopped that pipeline, that had stopped Putin from invading Ukraine, and Biden instead decided to try appeasement and weakness to Russia. That caused the invasion, but it's important to understand a huge part of the gasoline price hike has nothing to do with Putin. What it has to do with is the relentless war on U.S. oil and gas production domestically. And, and Joe, to be clear, this is what Joe Biden promised on the campaign right. trail. On that. the campaign trail, I, he told the American about, people, if you elect me, right. we'll, st we'll stop drilling. Can I ask you, you know, it's a global market, <clears throat> oil, and if, if you were to label each barrel and, and follow where it went, it, it could be disturbing, obviously, especially with what's happening with, you know, Russia's still exporting crude. We understand that. But it is a fungible market. And I'm just wondering, so you re, we released from the SPR, you're introducing a bill so that that particular oil can't find its way uh, to, to China or, or North Korea or, um, or, or Russia. But does it really, 
Isn't yeah. that sort of, will that do anything? Isn't that more symbolic, Senator? Because it could go somewhere so that oil stays in a country that's not on the list, but some of the other oil that was headed for that country does go to China. It just seems like it, it, it just seems like you're doing it for, uh, for a political reason. It, it, it's really not a big problem, although it looks bad. Well, look, it, it, it is indicative of the messed up priorities of this White House. You, you look at uh, out of control gasoline prices. You look at a, a war in Europe, the first major land war in Europe since World War II. What we ought to be doing is unleashing U.S. production. The high point for U.S. production was in 2019, we were producing 13 million barrels a day. We're now at about 11 and a half. That's down a lot. And a big part of the reason is that the Biden administration has waged a relentless war on U.S. oil and gas production, including halting the Keystone Pipeline, including shut the shutting down new leases onshore and offshore on federal land, including the SEC seeking to shut down equity financing for new exploration, including bank regulators seeking to shut down debt financing for new exploration. And bizarrely... But the Biden White House combines that with, with, with Joe Biden urging our enemies to produce more, urging Venezuela to produce more, urging Iran to produce more. It's entirely backwards. And, and the Strategic Petroleum Reserve is designed to protect this country in a security crisis. Biden's trying to release oil from it because he's desperately trying to drive prices down at the pump a little bit before the election. We're at the lowest level of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve right. since 1986, the largest uh, stockpile of oil right now is China, and bizarrely, Biden has been selling about a fifth of the oil from America's Strategic Petroleum Reserve, paid for by U.S. taxpayers, selling it to China. That is backwards. And it is amazing, Joe, you look across the world, every single region of the world has gotten worse because the Biden administration will not stand up to our enemies, and it's almost as if they can't differentiate between our friends and our enemies. They treat our friends terribly, Senator, and it, they treat our enemies with weakness. Right, well, yeah. when, we, when we talk back and forth with each other, uh, you know, and a lot of it is talking points, it's just, the, the real issue is whether, I mean, the entire planet is trying uh, to respond to what it sees as a calamity, and that is uh, anthropogenic global warming. And, you know, it, when you've got Europe on board, you've got the, the U.N., everybody's on board with it. So you can't really blame the, the Biden administration for going along with what the entire world, at least a large part of it, thinks is essential to do. So we really should have a conversation on how quickly that transition can be made and whether efforts by the United States in this country can have any effect, given that China's not necessarily going to lower emissions to the extent that they should. I mean, we've got the Paris Accord and, and things like that, but, but the Biden administration in trying to, to cut down uh, the use of fossil fuels is just doing what the entire world is trying to do at this point, right or wrong. And we should have a discussion about whether that is, is feasible in, in a time frame of 10 or 15 years instead of 40 or 50 years. But, you know, just pointing fingers and, and uh, you know, criticize that, it doesn't get at the crux of the matter because there's a whole group of people that say, look, if the world's going to end, you, you know, you really shouldn't be arguing the, the, the trivialities of, of how, you know, of what of the price of gas, for example. Uh, Joe, let me be clear. Facts are not talking points. And, and, you know, when you say something, when you repeat the tired language like the world's going to end, the world is not going to end. That is empty alarmism. And let's actually talk about facts. You want to talk what nation led the world in reducing CO2 emissions? That nation is the United States of America. Why did the United States of America lead the world in CO2 emissions? The answer is the shale revolution pioneered, pioneered in Texas that has resulted in wide-scale substitution of natural gas for coal in the production of electricity. What has Joe Biden done? The amazing thing is the zealots in this administration they are not engaged in reason. I sit down all the time with, with business leaders, energy leaders, and they give all sorts of facts and reasons. And I say, look, you don't understand. These zealots are not interested in facts or substance. 
this for them, they want to destroy U.S. oil and gas production. And, and if you don't believe me, go look at what Joe Biden said on the campaign trail, where he said, we're going to shut down drilling. He said he was going to do it, and he's followed through on doing it. And, and, and the, the amazing thing is, if you look at what Biden has done, it has killed jobs in the United States. It has driven prices through the roof, especially five, six, seven dollar a gallon gas. That's Joe Biden's fault, which the American people know. But on top of that, it's hurt the environment. Senator, it's made the environment worse. Senator, yeah. but what, what do you say to the price of, of, of but the price of oil in, in Europe, for example? I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a global context for what's happening here. OK, so let's let's take the price of oil in Europe. There's no doubt that Europe has pursued misguided energy policies for a young, long time, and they're now paying the price for it, including letting themselves become dependent on Russian oil and gas. But at the end of the day, the price of oil is set by supply and demand. And what we've right. seen is demand's gone up and supply's gone down. And 100 percent of the time, that's going to drive prices upwards. The, okay. the fundamental problem is that the U.S. is the world's leading superpower producing oil and gas, and Joe Biden's administration is trying to do everything they can but to Senator, hurt, to reduce well, that production. Okay, so if we give them and credit that for going up, up, do we give them any credit for going, and look, I, I'm not taking the position that they've done everything right, but I'm just suggesting oil is now off $35 from its, from its high. You gonna give, is, are you giving Joe Biden credit for that? So, 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 so is your prediction right now that, that, that gas prices are going to go way down? Be because you're, you're the only person on the planet saying that. Uh, I'm that, not that saying that they're going to go way down. That, I'm that's saying they've not already backed gone up by the facts. way down contextually with where they, uh, uh, with where well, they were a couple of weeks ago, about a month, month I, and a half ago now, right? I'm saying they're who, more than who double gets credit for that? what they were. Look, there's always some variation in prices, but but the graph is steady. And, and there you go. The graph is steady. Joe Biden gets in office. Boom, it goes up. So you get a little bit of wiggle, but it's going up and up and up. And, and, and look, folks at home, just just ask yourself, did you like it better when gas was two bucks or two fifty a gallon? Or do you like it better now when it's five, six, seven, eight dollars a gallon? Everybody it wants bizarre. it to be lower. Nobody, nobody's going to argue no, that no, they, they want No, they don't. The Democrats standard. want it to be higher. The Democrats want it to be $10 a gallon. They That's said that. You look at the AOCs and Elizabeth Warren, the Green New Deal, yes, it is, because here's what they want. They don't like the fact that when you drive home, you might get in a Suburban. They want you to get in a Prius, and they want to make it painful that when a mom is filling up her minivan, it costs 100 bucks or 150 bucks because they want to force her to sell that uh, car. And, you know, and that's Sarah, what the sure radicals are, are saying. On the, on the, on the ultra-right and ultra-left wings of parties that, that, that may have uh, particularly, uh, call it, uh, unique and aggressive views about things, including the one you may have just espoused, uh, about uh, one side of the party or the other. But I don't think that's what most uh, Democrats want, and I don't think that's what most Republicans want. A Andrew, let me ask you something. Why do you doubt that Democrats want to do what they said they wanted to do? Joe Biden campaigned. He said, if you elect me, I will shut oh. down drilling. Onshore, offshore, huh? I will shut it down. Why do you, do you think he was lying? I don't lying? disagree with and, you, and, sir. Senator, I don't disagree that that, okay, that well, was his stated intent, but I do not believe, and I don't think you believe either, that the intent was to, to make uh, gas, gas prices go to $100 a barrel. Uh, you know, you look at what's happening go, with Ukraine. Of course and it was. What do you think happens back. when you, you shut down people. drilling? Come, come, you come on, you're a, you're a smart guy. You're, a, you're an economist. You're saying, yes, it was an, his intent to shut down drilling, but he didn't want prices to go up. Even the Biden White Look, House understands when mistake, supply drops, and, and prices I think it was go up. A, I think it was a terrible mistake, which is that there's no question that, and we were talking with Tom Cotton, Senator Tom Cotton earlier, the ESG movement, uh, if you will, has gone uh, too far, potentially too fast. It's left us in this uh, unbe unbelievable conundrum, given the national security issues we're now confronting with uh, Russia and Ukraine and what's happening in Europe and, and elsewhere and China. There's no question about that. But when you ask about what people's intent was, I don't think anybody in their intent in their heart was for 
for, to, to put the put the economy into some kind of you know inflationary spiral. No, that no, was no, never not intent. the economy, but there is a. But Andrew, look, you and I actually left. have some Andrew, common no, ground on, there. Senator, Senator, there's a group on the left. He's going to help you. That, no, I'm not going to help. I'm just going to say if you go far enough left, the, the transition the transition to clean energy sure. is a lot easier if you get to parity on on renewable costs. Sure, and if you go and if you go far enough so right, five, there are people six, who don't want to believe in climate change at all. And so five, here six, we are. Right, you can't. It, that's true. But five, six, and seven dollar oil and, and, and or uh, Andrew, gasoline makes have... it a lot easier to to substitute uh, clean. We're going to horses. all come to the middle and, by and the end of this said, program together. I mean, Senator, uh, we, we had, I've talked to Bro's a friend of mine, Ro Khanna. He, he castigated, this is the end of last year, castigated the, the major oil companies here for not cutting production as much as the European oil companies had cut production. I mean, they're, they're, I think that they're not saying that as much now, uh, but that was the stated intention before the excrement hit the air conditioner. Well, and Joe, I'll say something. We had just a moment ago something that we haven't seen a lot on Squawk, which is Andrew and me agreeing. You know, Andrew just said that the ESG movement has gone way, way too far. I agree with that. By the way, the ESG movement is also a fraud. If you look at the companies that get good, quote, ESG scores, they typically have worse business performance and they do worse on the environment. But set that aside. What Andrew just said there is perfectly reasonable. I'm glad he's saying it, but there ain't nobody in the White House saying that. There ain't nobody in the Treasury well, Department I, or the Commerce I, Department for, saying for better that. Or and worse, the Biden I don't, administration I don't is unwilling to... on any side of the, the aisle. I, I hopefully am. But, but, but my point is the government policies from the Biden administration to this day are still trying to hammer U.S. oil and gas production. And when I right. talk to people that are wanting to explore more and produce more, their problem is capital is drying up because this yep. administration is waging a war to cut off debt financing and equity financing. If you can't Senator, get debt and you can't get yep. equity, you don't have the money for new production. Talk to, your, talk to your colleagues on both sides. I hear that this is the only show where you can have a discussion like this in a reasonable manner. I and agree I hear with that. I hear, I hear I agree it all, that. And I hear it all the time. And I think we need to, to be proud. Say it loud and say it proud. Thanks, Senator. It's good, good to have you on uh, this morning. Coming up.